Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So Donald Trump has won the US presidency. What does this mean for global conflict? What does this mean for you, wherever you live in the world? And what does this mean for Iraq, sorry, Iran, Ukraine, the Middle East? Uh, China, what does it mean for the rest of the world going forward? Guys, if you've not done so already, please like, share, subscribe, click the buttons down below. Really helps me out when you guys do that. So I've been saying this for such a long time. I mean, this diversions is that you're going to see now. You can cut this with a knife. You can actually see what's happening. How can David Lammy and Keir Starmer have an actual conversation with Donald Trump after their previous rhetoric? It's just not going to work. Remember, the people who really control what's happening in the world are behind the scenes. So what you're going to see now is more rhetoric. Well, Donald Trump will pull funding from Ukraine. That is literally the only thing he can do. I don't see the war and the war is not going to end in Ukraine. A war will only end if both sides say so. The Russians are not going to say the war's over and the Ukrainians are not going to say the war's over. Why? Why would the Ukrainians say the war's over when half of their, well, not half of their land, when a lot of their land has been taken by the Russians? Why are the Russians going to say that, that the war is over when they can see an end, when, when they can see the end, uh, the finish line? It, you know, it's not going to happen. So the United States will pull the money from um, the conflict in Ukraine. That's going to do two things. First of all, it's going to put financial pressure on Europe, you know, well, on Europe, basically, because it's the Europe that are going to have to deal with this. That will then that financial pressure on Europe will give Europe two options and they'll take both of them. So they will have initially, I think they're going to give more money. But then when they see how much money they're actually spending, what they're going to do is they're going to have to authorize the uh, use of long range weapons inside Russia. That's the, only, that's the only way that this thing can happen. That's the only way that these things can move forward. So in the Middle East, what you're going to see now, and I think this could come on Friday, guys. All right. I, you know, I've been wrong before, but I would say the... Uh, I just dropped my phone. <laughs> so I would say the earliest that this could come would be Friday. So the earliest that you could see a catastrophic uh, strike into Israel would be Friday. This would be an Iranian strike into Israel. Let's not forget, you know, the Iranians can strike with precision. I think they've been holding back. I really do. I think they've been holding back. They've been telegraphing these strikes. Now, when you're looking at an uh, Iranian strike into Israel, you've got to consider the logistics. You've got to consider the radar signatures. and You've got to consider the defences. So... The two options you have, you can either do a quick attack whereby you would send your fast moving missiles that they, they would be, they would hit there in a matter of, I, I, I'm not sure the flight time with a uh, ballistic missile, but when you're talking about sending a drone, drones in first, that would take a lot longer. So if you use your missiles first, you're talking about, I think maybe like under an hour or something, you could get those ballistic missiles into um, Israel, which would give Israel limited time to respond. It would give allies limited time to get their aircraft in the air and mobilize. So, but with that, you would have the Iron Dome operating on full capacity. Now, if you use drones to come first, the drones will take a long time. I'm talking like maybe 10 hours to get those drones. I, I may be slightly wrong off that, but it would take about 10 hours to get those drones from their launch pads in um, in Iran over to Israel. The cheap drones would swarm the Iron Dome. Once the Iron Dome starts faltering, that's when you would send your missiles over. So the, the ballistic missiles could get through the Iron Dome. Now, the two options that the Iranians have for a strike on Israel are they could fire their, you know, they could set their drones off a lot closer. So they could potentially move into locations in Iraq or, as we've seen developing, locations in Syria. If this happens, that would obviously give people a lot less time to mobilize. It would give allies a lot less time to get their aircraft in the air and start suppressing these targets. It would also suppress the iron dome it would make the iron dome start using its expensive missiles taking out cheap drones and once that starts failing once that starts running out of ammunition then you send the big intercontinental not intercontinental but then you send the longer range um, ballistic missiles in <clears throat> 
So this could happen now as early as Friday. Now, a lot of you guys are talking about nuclear conflict. And if you've been following on, on my platforms, I, you know, I've been one of, I think I've been one of the most tangible voices that has been saying, guys, listen, we're not going to see any nuclear bombs get thrown at each other until there have been a series of tests. Now, if you look back through history, look at the height of the Cold War. I think the Russians and the Americans were doing like three tests a month. They were testing um, ground-based missiles. They were testing out of submarines. They were air launching these systems. You know, they were ground launching these systems from mobile uh, mobile platforms. Now, the reason you, the reason you need to do this is because contrary to popular belief, these missiles take a lot of engineering. They take a lot of tweaking. They take a lot of. Um, time, money, resources, investing into those things to make them work. And I give the analogy all the time about, you know, Vladimir Putin have the big, you know, having the biggest stockpile of nuclear weapons. It's kind of like me, me owning a breaker's yard and, and claiming that I own 150 cars. Do I own 150 cars? Well, I've got 150 chassis numbers. I've got 150, you know, shells. I've got 50 engines, I've got 30 gearboxes, I've got 200 tires, you know, I, you, you see where I'm going with that, guys, you know. You need to have these things refurbished on a regular basis. You need to have these a lot of money put into these things. Now, there's various, you know, various elements of these. The one that I identified have been the biggest um, block to the Russian nuclear, the Russian nuclear deterrent is the um, availability of tritium. I've done lots of videos about tritium, guys. If you've not seen them, go and look at the videos I've done about tritium and the tritium supply. That is key for nuclear weapons. Now, whereas the Americans will have a plentiful supply of tritium, I'm not convinced that the Russians do. That doesn't mean they don't have some. It means they don't have a plentiful supply. So what you're seeing right now, and I'll just, I think I've got it here. Yeah. So what we're seeing right now, and this is absolutely wild, guys. Remember how I said sometimes that my timelines are often aggressive, and often too aggressive. I think in yesterday's video, I also said it. I also said, but right now, my timeline, I feel I'm, I feel I'm lying because things are moving a lot faster. I said the next stage needs to happen early on in the Trump presidency. And I said that yesterday before even before the election was called. Anyway, so let's go on to this share screen. US to test, what's that say? Experts agree, so is it? Okay. US US to test hypersonic nuclear missile tonight. That you know, that to me sounds like you know the beginning of the Terminator where they say um as the war uh, the beginning of the thing when it comes on the first terminator as the war as the war against humanity raged for decades the final battle would not be fought in the future before hearing our presence tonight kind of gives me those vibes and they've been literally at the beginning of the terminator and that's, that's not a good thing but humans will prevail u.s to test uh to test hypersonic nuclear missile tonight just hours after u.s election polls close amid growing world war three fears now guys I've been, when people, when everybody was talking about nuclear war and is Putin going to launch nuclear weapons, I was very clear. I was very, very clear. And I said, no, I said, for the reasons I've just set out, I said, I don't see this happening just yet. I said, guys, I've said this in many, many videos going back, like probably over a year. Nobody's going to be firing nuclear missiles until both sides have done a series of tests. Well, the Russians did a test like last week. They tested their system. And now guess what? The United States are, well, I'll read it here, guys. The United States, the U.S. military is set to conduct a test launch of a hypersonic nuclear missile hours after polls close on Election Day. An unarmed Minuteman three intercontinental ballistic missile, ICBM, is scheduled to blast off between, that's a bit weird, um, 11.01 and uh, 05.01. Uh, Pacific time from California's Vandenberg Space Force Base. Some Americans have expressed concern about the nuclear weapons test on the same day as the country is casting their votes for the next president. So I'll put this article in the description, guys, um, and let you and you know you can read through it yourself. But this fits perfectly, even, you know, this fits perfectly into what I've been saying about, you know, nuclear conflict moving forward. 
initially I said no because you know there are so many there's so many problems and so many things that can go wrong when you're talking about launching one of these nuclear weapons. In the description to this video, guys, I'll try and put a video on or or, or some or, or some technical um, or something about the engineering problems with you know actually detonating a nuclear weapon. It's you know it's not as easy as pushing a button. You know there, there's a lot of stuff that that can go wrong, and if one of those links breaks down. Then the the system's not gonna the the, uh, the 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 weapon I guess is not gonna operate. So the United States are now due to test one of these missile systems, guys. We are literally edging closer now to this um, to this H hour to this P hour whatever guys you want whatever you want to call it. But at some point you're gonna see more rhetoric build up like this. We are heading right now into a new phase of what whatever is happen happening. Remember yesterday I gave the uh, Lord of the Rings analogy. I said, we are at the Battle of Helm's Deep right now. And if Trump wins the presidency, that will be like the Elf Army turning up. Well, guess what? The Elf Army have just turned up, but there is so much more work to do now. People shouldn't, shouldn't relax. Nobody needs to relax. People need to understand what is ahead of them. And, you know, I lost... A <laughs> I lost some um, I lost some viewers yesterday because uh, you know it, 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 I, I was apparently throwing right wing conspiracy theorists out there and I don't know what the right wing conspiracy theorists are but you know I've been pretty what that we are humans and we are have a human condition and that human condition is to make our situation better it's to be competitive it's to be it's to want more for ourselves and it's to fight for resources. Guys, if we didn't have that human competitivity, if we didn't have that human spirit, guess what? We would all be st still be in the woods foraging with sticks, looking for berries, and you know, and and that would be it. And our life expectancy would be about thirty years old, uh, you know, as it's been for most of human existence, you know, until the Great Awakening, and people can talk about I don't know DNA editing and aliens and all sorts of wild stuff. The reality is, I wasn't there when it happened. I just know where I am now. So. We've got to understand the human condition when we're looking at these things. We've got to understand that the global timelines, we are we are overdue a global conflict. I think we're in it. I think it already started on the 1st of October, 2000, well, this year, actually, 1st of October this year. In the last video I did, guys, I talked about how the United States already have a legal framework for a war with Iran. What you're going to see now is, you know, people, people in Ukraine are, uh, people in Ukraine are really worried right now. And I'm, I'm saying this to people in Ukraine, don't, you know, don't be worried. Nothing's going to change in Ukraine at all. The Europeans will continue to support you and they will, you know, they will plug that gap where the, the United States have left. Logistically, the United States can't get involved in a conflict in Ukraine. It makes no sense. And I, and I give the analogy like I, I can't remember how to get it on this channel or other channel. If you're at work and you have two huge piles of sand to move and there's only two of you, you know, you're just going to have to look at it and you're going to have to say, right, OK, mate, you're going to have to deal with that pile of sand and I'm going to have to deal with this pile of sand. And that's just the way it is. It doesn't mean those two people are not friends. It means they just have to turn the backs on each other for a little bit while they deal with the piles of sand that they've got to do whatever they've got to do with. And by piles of sand, guys, I mean... Whatever this takeover is, I mean, if you're in the United Kingdom right now, you really do feel it. You feel people are like people are scared. I mean, I was talking to someone in a um, little, little store by me, a uh, little uh, convenience store, you know, and. You know, they were saying they've just been laid off at work and they've got no intention in finding another job. And I said, well, OK, why not? He said, well, why should I bother? I said, what do you mean? He said. Well, I can work and get taxed and see all my money go away in tax, or I can just not work, get a similar amount of money and sit at home all day. So where's the incentive now to build Britain? Where's the incentive? People don't feel incentivized right now in the United Kingdom to work. They don't feel, in, and, and I, you know, I, it's always better to work, but when people, and again, you know, I, I feel like I'm biased with that opinion because I know a lot of people, there is no incentive for them to work. Um, 
but people right now in the United Kingdom, they don't feel like there's any incentive to work because all they're seeing is their taxes go up, the prices of everything go up, you know, any hope of people finding houses, you know, moving into property, those prices are going up. Buying a property is becoming more expensive. Renting a property is becoming more expensive. Buying foods becoming more expensive. And yesterday, guys, I was in um, I was in Morrison's. I don't know if I don't know if you guys have got Morrison's or not, but where, wherever you live. And if you don't live in the United Kingdom, then Morrison's is like it's one of the big supermarkets. Um, I go there because they do two pizza, two handmade pizzas for a for five pound, and I still think that's an awesome deal. Um, you can get five toppings and always get extra cheese. Um, but the the fruit aisle, the fruit and veg had just been absolutely pilfered. It, there was nothing there. It was like it was apocalyptic. I said to the guy, I said, "Have you had a? Have you had? Um, have you have you had a shortage of? Um, has your truck delivery truck not turned up?" He said, "No, people have just been going mad for it today." So. I think that may be because people in the United Kingdom are starting to wake up and think, right, OK, we're going to have, you know, we're going to have a lot of shortages that are coming in from Spain right now. And again, I don't know why they bulk buy bulk bought uh, vegetables, because those vegetables are going to, you know, they're going to have gone off or they're not going to be they, they're, they're going to be past their prime by the time these shortages hit the United Kingdom. But, you know, we, we, those things are coming. Think about the amount of products that's built in Spain, uh, built, uh, grown in Spain in the uh, in the what time is it in the Valencia region? It's absolutely huge, you know, and that's going to have a knock on effect to the United Kingdom, to the food supply in the United Kingdom. Remember, right now in the United Kingdom, we have had the wettest season on record. So this year, we're going to have the lowest yield crops this year. I, I, I would I would assume we're going to have the lowest yield on season. You know, I, I, I've got. I, I don't I, I've not got any evidence to back that up other than the wettest season when it's your planting um, when it's your planting window. That would mean you can't plant seeds. That means that because you can't plant seeds, you can't grow. That means that you're going to get a poor yield. So the stuff that you have planted, it's not going to have grown to fruition. And guys, I don't know if it's just me, but I've been noticing this. I, I did a video. I, I, I was on my live stream, I think yesterday or the day before. Uh, in the United Kingdom right now, I can't remember the last time I saw the sky. It's been, it, it just feeble feels to me like we've had a cloud over us for like, over, for like weeks. I genuinely can't remember the last time I saw like blue sky poking through. It's absolutely wild at the moment. I don't know what, I don't know what that's all about. Um, so yeah, the food shortages are coming to the United Kingdom. And I've been warning about this for, for months and months and months. And as we as we move forwards in our history, in our time, in our evolution, more and more outside things affect this. Now, I do want to keep this back to the, I do want to swing back to the uh, United States, guys, on what's happening there and how this is going to affect global, the global wars or the global conflict, whatever you guys think. Elon Musk's been a huge um, component of Donald Trump's uh, victory. I think Elon Musk. It's. Uh, I mean, I. I was a. I was an, an Elon Musk fanboy until I saw this Neuralink thing that he was doing. I was like, right, okay, this makes no sense. But now I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking, okay, right, if this is gonna happen, it's better to control that technology and be the world leader than. I don't know where I stand with this, guys. Okay, I really don't know whether I stand with this. And and somebody put made a video about the um, the word Neuralink. The word Neuralink. If you put that in the, I think it's the like the Greek numerology or something, um, or it might even be Hebrew. The, there's a numerology sequence that every letter in the, I think it's the Hebrew in Hebrew has a numerical value. And the numerical value for Neuralink is 666. I just don't see how that can be a coincidence. So I, I'm, I, I don't, I don't know. I genuinely don't know how I feel about this, guys. I really don't. It's, you know, we're living in absolute wild times. Really are wild times. But that's why I wanted to, um, I'm going to do another longer video later, guys, later on tonight when more information's come out. But Donald Trump's claimed the US presidency. The uh, feels like the Elf Army has turned up. You know, Western civilization feels like we have at least a fighting chance now against this woke liberal takeover that's happening. You know, I, I lost a few viewers, but you know, it is what it is. Um, 
I'm, I'm not going to, I'm certainly not going to change my opinions. Um, that is it, guys. I'm going to leave it there. We're going to be live on Friday. We're giving away another Urban Survival Kit. Um, that's it, guys. Yeah, I'm going to Mac to Grid, and I will get you guys another video later.